Despite being far, far away, the Star Wars galaxy is dominated by humans. A storytelling conceit that is, of course, very common in science fiction. Biologically, the humans of Star Wars are pretty much the same as the humans of our world, and this generally leads them to being written off when discussing Star Wars species. But that's not going to be the case today. Human history in the Star Wars universe is darker and bloodier than almost any other, and in this video, we'll be taking a reflective look on our species' self-insert into the story of Star Wars. Attention, Sergeant on deck! By the time of the Star Wars movies, humans were the dominant species in the galaxy and unquestionably so. Planets in the known galaxy without humans were few and far between, and a vast number of worlds across the galaxy were dominated by humans. Most major planets had majority human populations, and on any world that didn't have a native sentient species, humans were bound to be at least the largest share of the population. Humanocentrism, the belief that humans were superior to other, more alien species, was unfortunately common for large swaths of galactic history, and it was even codified in the form of high human culture laws during the time of the Galactic Empire. To everyone else in the galaxy, humans were seen as everything from wonderfully impressionable to somewhat responsible to overpopulating pests. They had no real defining stereotypes, they were just human. Biologists considered them the average of sentient life in the galaxy. Most aliens' opinions on humans as a species were more related to their predominance in the galaxy, which often was the spark of resentment among some alien communities. On Nar Shaddaa, for example, where humans were only 20% of the population, the other species of the moon treated humans almost like pests, forcing them into sectors that they cut off from the rest of the moon-wide city. On many worlds, aliens built establishments designed to be inhospitable to humans so they could get away from them, like the Jek Jek Tar, a gas bar on Nar Shaddaa which also served as a front for criminal operations. The dominance of humans in the galaxy begs a question, how did they, as HK47 put it, breed out of control and fill the galaxy? What is it that makes humans so dominant, aside from out-of-universe storytelling conceits? The simple answer is adaptability. As the countless near-human species in the galaxy suggest, the human genome is very well suited to adaptation to a wide variety of planetary conditions, and more importantly, the society and culture of humans as a whole has always been very flexible and adaptable. Tens of thousands of years before the Battle of Yavin, long before the Republic or even the Rakatan Infinite Empire, two species evolved together on a planet called Notron. Neutron circled a blue-white star in the core of the galaxy, not far north of what would later become the borders of the Deep Core, at a distance that was on the far end for habitable worlds. Though the humans of later years would have found ancient Neutron a bit cold, it was nonetheless the birthplace of their ancestors and of a reptilian species called the Tong. For millennia, the two species lived in relative peace with one another, but as they developed, it became clear that Neutron wasn't big enough for both of them. In 200,000 BBY, a war broke out between the 13 human nations of Cell and the Tongs, a war that lasted for centuries. At one point in the war, the Zell came close to complete victory, but the last stand of the Tongs was interrupted by a massive volcanic eruption that destroyed Great Zell, the capital city of the 13 nations. Seeing this as a sign that the gods favoured them, the Tongs used the cover of the resulting ash cloud to slaughter their enemies, turning the tide of the war. But the advantage of the self-proclaimed warriors of the Shadow didn't last, and the Zell eventually drove them from Neutron entirely. For millennia, the Tongs wandered the galaxy, settling on Rune for a time before, many tens of millennia after their initial exile, Mandalore the first led them to a planet that came to bear its name, where the Tongs became the first of the Mandalorians. Meanwhile, the victorious humans continued to develop. In 100,000 BBY, the foundations of a great city were laid, and over the course of the years that followed, said city grew to encompass the entire planet. 
Seas were drained and the great city began to be provided with water from polar irrigation systems and vast water recycling complexes. Orbital mirrors were constructed to warm up the planet as the humans began to experiment with space travel. At night, the planetary city glowed like Karuska stones as seen from orbit and so Neutron was eventually renamed Coruscant. As a matter of curiosity for galactic anthropologists, the development of human society on Coruscant ran concurrent with the development of human society on Corellia tens of thousands of years before the two civilizations could have connected with each other organically. As the whole Corellia system appears to have been artificially constructed by the Celestials, it is believed that the Corellians were transplanted to the system from Coruscant by the Celestials, an ancient and unbelievably powerful species that vanished before the dawn of galactic history. This highlights an important underlying characteristic of humanity and of galactic civilization in the Star Wars universe on a whole. They didn't develop in a bubble. In fact, most modern technology by the time of the Empire was not organically developed. It was stolen and reverse engineered and came to be understood only after long periods of time, which is, incidentally, why technology developed so slowly in the Star Wars universe. Clearly, the Celestials interfered with humanity to some degree, as is evinced by Corellia. Their development was also likely impacted by the presence of the Tong. It is also known that Coruscant had contact with the Gri, an ancient spacefaring civilization that is believed to have helped humans plan the original infrastructure of Galactic City. But by far, the most impactful case of interference was that of the Rakata. Their bloodthirsty infinite empire discovered and conquered Coruscant in 30,000 BBY, making it one of many, many worlds across the galaxy that came under the rule of the Rakata. As they did with all other species they encountered, the Rakata enslaved the humans, and due to human adaptability, the Rakata began using them for slave labor on worlds across the infinite empire, unintentionally seeding parts of the galaxy with humans. Many of these populations later developed into near-human species. Slavery, it would seem, went somewhat differently for humanity than it did for other species, likely due to the fact that Coruscant was already incredibly developed and the Rakata likely didn't have the resources to keep the whole planet in an iron grip. As a result, humans began to steal, reverse engineer and adapt Rakatan technology, leading to the development of sleeper ships, which they started launching in around 27,500 BBY. Over the course of the centuries that followed, humans colonized planets across the Arrowhead region of the Core Worlds. The list of pre-Republic human colonies includes Metelos, Alsican, Axum and Naxus, Topasi, Alderan, Kuat, Rendili, Corfi, Brentil 4, Chandrila, Esselus, Biza 2, Shokan, Raltir, Korolag and Rinal. Expeditions beyond the core were launched as well, leading to the development of the Chiss species on Celia. One such remote colonization effort led to the development of Tierney's culture in the Outer Rim, starting on the planets Barseg and Janalus 7. In 25,200 BBY, the Rakatan Infinite Empire began to collapse. A plague, which some believe to have been engineered by one of the Rakatan slave species, began to spread like wildfire, affecting only the Rakata and stripping them of the force, which deprived them of the ability to use their technology. At the same time, their slaves began rising up on a massive and unseen scale, forcing the Rakata back to their homeworld in the unknown regions. Humanity reclaimed rule of their worlds and a new chapter of galactic history began. In the years that followed, humans continued to explore the core in earnest. By that point, the first wave of human colonies in the region had developed cultures and civilizations, and so they began making colonies of their own, expanding out into the region of the galaxy that, appropriately, became known as the Colonies. Around this time, they made contact with the Corellians and many of the other species in the core, including the Duros, the Kamasai, and the Kolumai. The core civilizations began to reverse engineer the technology the Rakata had abandoned, leading to the creation of the ancestors of modern droids, blaster weaponry, and most importantly, the hyperdrive. This uncertain period of galactic history came to a close in 25,053 BBY with the Unification Wars, a series of conflicts fought between warlords in the Core Worlds. 
One side, it is said, received the backing of the legendary Bendu monks and of the Jedi Knights, despite the core civilizations not discovering the Jedi until 25,000 BBY. The Unification Wars ended with the representatives of a number of prominent core worlds coming together and drafting a constitution, one that would be the founding document of the New Galactic Republic. The Republic took Coruscant as its capital, and with the discoveries of the modern hyperdrive, and subsequently the Jedi Order in around 25,000 BBY, galactic civilization as we know it was born. From the very beginning, it was human dominated, though the Duros and Kamasai were also very influential, and as the Republic began to rapidly expand, humans began to see themselves across the stars. So, that's the ancient history of the humans of the Star Wars galaxy. But as per usual, what do you think? Do you think we should discuss pre-Republic stories more often and in general the history of the Star Wars universe? Make sure you let us know in the comment section below. And as per usual, just before you go, make sure you check out all those juicy links in the description below to join the wider Geetsies community on our Geetsies gaming network where you can join us on Roblox and our Gary's mod, our main Discord server where you can chat with other Star Wars fans such as yourself, and the Patreon if you want to help support the channel more than you already are by watching these videos and get access to a special behind the scenes Discord. Anyways guys, as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.